This is how I got the chance to work on one of the biggest TV shows in the world. My name is Michael and I'm a filmmaker and photographer from Sweden. So in this video I'm gonna talk about how I landed the job to do the intro for the Swedish Masterchef, also called Sveriges Mästerkock here in Sweden. For four seasons I was doing the intro that was rolling on the commercial and also in the beginning of every episode. And at the time, this was probably the most uh, watched TV show in Sweden, or perhaps at the top. <laughs> so one day I got a call from this person working at this uh, advertising company. What are you doing on Sunday? Do you want to come and film the vignette for the Swedish MasterChef? And I was like, um, yeah, sure. At first, my job was to only be behind the camera and someone else doing the editing, but then I ended up doing the editing as well. So how did the pre-production and the planning and the briefing look? Uh, I would say it was fairly simple, much more simple than you would think when you're working on this big of a um, production or big of a TV show. I would probably say that the TV show is massive, but the production and the work that I was doing um, was not super big and uh, the budget was not that big either. Beforehand, I got a brief and I got a storyboard of what shots we needed. Um, basically, if we want to break it down, we want to have a big hero shots of all the people sitting behind the table. We want to have individual shots of all the people as well. And then to fill it out, we need B-rolls of food and uh, prepping food and etc. And then we want to end with a shot of uh, different food laying out on a table and then just grabbing one by one. Pretty simple and straightforward ID. Since I've been doing four of those, we pretty much just replicated them each year. And I think that's most how you do it in TV. If you have a concept and you're doing a new season, you're not changing anything. It's pretty much just do the same thing again. So on set then, how did we shoot this? Um, this was actually shot the day before they were gonna shoot the TV show itself. So they bring in all the people that was in the show and they were gonna film for maybe six or eight weeks, something like that, I'm not sure. So it's a pretty tight schedule. I think I came there at like eight, nine in the morning and we're finished up at like four. So we had maybe eight hours to shoot all this things and we could use the lights that was on set that they were going to use for the TV but also we brought some extra lights because um, I think what they're using on the TV show and the cameras um, is a bit different from when you're shooting a vignette like this you maybe want like softer and more like kind of focus light with that being said I actually got a lot of help from the people who were controlling the lights for the TV show yeah pretty much everything about the set design that we were lighting up and I think that stood for probably 70% of the light and then we added in some extra lights on the people that we needed and that was probably the extra 30%. So how did the team look on set? So we probably had one or two project manager. We had a few assistants and then we had like a creative director and then it was me. So mainly it was me and the creative director who was styling each shot and with the lighting and how we wanted the frame to look. So we were kind of like splitting on the directing side and uh, I was uh, doing all the photography work. Let's jump into the post production. And yes, here is where the whole post-production was made. In my office, in my apartment. It's a 
simple desk. I have an iMac and I have a bigger external SSD drive there, 20 terabytes. And uh, yeah, it's not a super crazy setup. I just have one screen. I have been working on two and three screens before, but I like to keep it simple and clean as you see here. So I would rather have a super clean setup and then I can work. And the machine I'm having right now is good enough. Okay, so let's break down the editing process for when I'm editing a project like this. And I must say that the process is uh, pretty much the same for every video that I'm working on. And that is because I want to have a super simple and easy structure that I can work with for each project. So the basics are the same all the time. And that way I can work fast and I can leave a lot of room for being creative, which is the most important part. So step one is I start to go through all the footage and uh, just watching everything, get a feel for it and also take out and slicing it up. So I'm, I'm taking out the bits that I like and I move it up to a different track uh, and then um, I just keep watching it. So I try to do, do it in a pretty fast pace. Once I'm done with that, I go to step number two, and that's the organizing. And to do that, I put all the different shots on different tracks. So I may have the hero shots on one track, I may have the individual shots on the second track, I may have a food shots on the fourth track, just so I can keep track of where I have all the shots. And the next step, is to organize it even more by adding colors to all the shots. So the first track might get one color, second track might get another color, third another color and so on. I just want to keep it super simple so I can get a clear overview when I'm looking at the timeline and I know exactly these shots are this kind of shots and the green ones are this kind of shots and the yellows are this kind of shots. And this is something I use for all my production. Um, let's say I shoot interviews, that's usually like a blue color. B-roll is uh, most of the time a yellow color. If I do time lapse and so on, that might also be a green color. And if I use different design elements and so on, I use the pink uh, or the rose color that it's called in Premiere. The last thing I add on is the adjustment layer with the color correction. And that color is always brown. So yes, this might sound super organized, but that's also the way that I want to work. I want to keep it simple and leave a lot of room for creativity. So that means also if I would start up a project that I've been working on for maybe two years ago or three years ago, just by looking at a timeline, I would get a pretty clear overview what is happening and uh, what the video will be about. I actually read a pretty interesting quote about this a couple years ago, and I think that summarizes this whole way of working, I would say. And it's from Abraham Lincoln, and it says, give me six hours to chop down a tree and I will spend the first four sharpening the axe. When the slicing of the footage is done and the organizing is done, now it's time to start edit and be creative. I usually like to get the edit done as fast as possible from start to finish. It doesn't need to be perfect, it should be rough. And when I have all the shots in order the way I want, then I can look at the colors and after that I can go back into finding the details and uh, 
tweeting all the stuff here and there, but I don't want to spend too much time on the details before I have a rough cut done. So for me, it's very crucial to get the first super rough edit done as fast as possible so I can save time and energy to spend as much time as possible uh, in this last section where I just changing and tweaking and doing it over and over and over again because the more time I can spend there the more and the better the end product is going to be. As you've seen, it was quite a small team on set. The editing suite where I did all the editing um, in my apartment, it's not uh, super big either. So I think it's funny to see some of the work that you see on the biggest TV shows that has millions of views can be created on a fairly small budget and on a fairly small crew. But at the end of the day, the only thing that matters is what comes out. If you're doing it on a small laptop or if you have like the biggest editing suite you can't really tell uh, where it's coming from so this has been a fun project i've been doing four of these so i was a bit nervous doing the first one um since it was like a big uh, project and probably the biggest thing that i worked on and it would probably get the most eyeballs on it but when i was doing the second the third and the fourth season it was pretty easy we were just like copying the same thing we did before and for me i was actually trying to spice it up a little bit uh, as much as i could not super much but doing something that got me excited about doing this and not just treating it like uh, work because if so many people are going to watch this i want to put out good quality and then i need something that's going to trigger me to do good work but when i had done four of these intros i kind of felt done of course i'm super happy that i've done those it's a pretty big part of my portfolio i think this is also that lifts my own brand and uh, yeah if people see this on my website and they've seen that i did it I think it kind of stands for pretty high quality and people know that I'm a good filmmaker. So I think I've proven that and that's also why I want to move on to different projects and uh, show what other things I can do within filmmaking. And what that is, you will see if you follow this channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in another video maybe. Thank you and bye.